morning guys I'm not sure if today is the day to be critical or what don't know exactly what my deal is but there's always already a couple things that have ticked me off right off the bat so first of all Michaela the influencer with the heavy, strong New England accent. What is going on with the lighting? The girl has such an energetic personality. You just can't help but love her. But as I've mentioned in this channel before, one of my biggest beefs with content creators is how fake they are, how they don't publish the truth. Everybody's got their own reasons, their own driving force behind why they have their channel. Not everybody is creating content to try to be helpful. And I get that. Some people are just after the dollar and they're doing what they feel they have to do to make a buck. But I have a problem with that. I guess that's what it comes down to is I have a problem with people lying and putting out false information and my tripods waddling, waddling, wobbling all over the place. And I thought it was stable, but apparently it's not as stable as I thought it was. Sorry about that guys. So I have this major beef with people who are not truth tellers people who are not connected to reality, people who have, who tell half truths, people who are just, you know, dishonest and fake and ingenuine. So Michaela posted a video a couple of days ago. It was her one year anniversary of her and her husband's wedding. And they took a vacation to Aruba. And in this video, she go, she starts out the video really cute, like she's letting her husband sleep in. She's doing her get ready with me makeup routine. And then she goes into the outfit and what they're gonna do for the day. And the outfit she makes a big deal out of because they were going to go to the butterfly gardens in Aruba that day and go shopping and have lunch. And she was super excited because she had this really cute dress, like a spaghetti strap dress that had beautiful butterflies all over it. It was a white dress with a bunch of butterflies all over it. And it was a cute dress and she looked dynamite in it. But then later in the video, you see her at the butterf butterfly gardens and she shows this butterfly on her leg and she's wearing a pair of white shorts. So you know she changed out of the butterfly dress into a different outfit before they ever got to the butterfly gardens because she was wearing the white shorts at the butterfly garden. And it's like, okay, so she never wore the butterfly dress. Why did she make such a big deal out of posing again with the cross-legged, one leg over the other leg cross in front with a hand on the hip and that drives me nuts. Just stand like a normal person. No one stands like that with their one leg crossed over the front, kind of jutted out like that. It makes me crazy. No one stands like that as a normal person, like in daily life. The only time someone stands like that is when they're in front of a mirror. And then she doesn't even wear the dress that she's making the video about. But apparently she needed to add in a little puffery or puff up the content or something or what she had wasn't good enough I don't know or maybe she looked cute but the butterfly dress wasn't appropriate why didn't in her voiceover why didn't she just say yeah by the way the outfit was so cute and it might work for a night out on the beach at a cocktail bar or whatever a tiki bar but I couldn't wear it to the butterfly garden and I wound up changing out of it why does she leave it as is and imply that she wore this butterfly dress to the butterfly garden that's what I'm talking about Maybe it slipped her mind. Maybe she forgot. Maybe she didn't even think about it. A few of the viewers caught it like I did though. I watch these videos with a very critical eye. Don't tell us all about this beautiful little dress that's super cute with butterflies all over it and how ironic it is that you're wearing it to the butterfly gar garden and how cool that is if you're not gonna wear it. Hundreds of butterflies, some of them will even land right. Speak truth, people, speak truth. 
Now here's the other beef, the day of critic. I am bound and determined to turn this morning around though, because I'm on my way to work and I've just, I feel such gratitude inside, which I know is so ironic considering my critical mood this morning. Now I'm gonna whine about my neighbor who mowed his lawn and I, I swear he thinks that he's God when he mows his lawn. Like I did this big thing, I mowed my lawn and ha ha ha. You know, this guy has got the ego of King Kong, and yet he goes around his teeny, tiny, maybe eighth of an acre yard, and he's on a riding lawnmower to do that lawn, and doesn't mow in straight lines. He goes in circles and waves and all over the place and leaves patches that he misses and doesn't trim or edge anything. And then he hops off his riding lawnmower like, yep, I mowed my lawn. If you did a phenomenal, bang up, impressive, beautiful job on your lawn, then you have every right to toot your own horn and go, look at what I did. And I'm gonna pat you on the back and say, good job, thank you neighbor for having such a beautiful lawn. You're helping to make my place look lovely and we're my husband does the same thing he's gonna go through the trimming and the edging and all this stuff it's the whole ego thing like I don't really care how the neighbor mows the lawn I would like him to do a little bit more mindful of a job and pay a little bit more attention to detail but I don't really care what bothers me is the ego. The pompous strutting around like he accomplished something big when it looks like crap. And you know what? At this point, right before I park my car, I'm vowing to you that I'm turning this attitude around and I'm not going to be critical. Let me rephrase that. I'm going to try not to be critical <laughs> and have a good attitude today because I have a good life. I'm blessed. I have a lot to be thankful for. And no one else deserves a critical, whiny person. So I, of course, am noticing that irony in my statement that I just made. But I hope that you learned something from me in this video and that it was a positive influence in some way. If not, if we get a couple months down the road and it's not and I'm finding this negative vibe from this video as a result, you guys comment on here, let me know and I'll take the video down. Peace. Well, I was fortunate enough to snap out of it this morning and get out of the critical and funk that I was in. And I was able to have a couple good laughs this morning with my coworkers and we got talking a little bit later in the morning about some estate planning that was going on with some of the people that um, we're in business with. And my one coworker had made a comment that she had finished her will and she was so happy and felt accomplished that things were taken care of for her and she didn't have any worries if anything were to happen to her that her two adult sons were taken care of and that there wouldn't be any squabbling or chaos in the family because she had everything taken care of. <sighs> Whatever your personal opinion is, and my personal opinion, I need to set aside for the case of the story, but we got talking about this and I had shared that my dad, you know, had been strategic about this and um, so that nothing would go through probate. But fast forward after the conversation, I fell into this funk at work where I was up here in my head thinking further thoughts about my dad's death and how things were handled with my siblings and how my dad had selected the executor on his estate to be my sister. The, the one person of all of us who is not super book smart. I feel so guilty saying that, but is also not super street smart either. My sister is somewhat of an airhead 
uh, and, and I say that with the greatest affection for her, we have drifted apart over the years ever since she um, started this affair with her now husband. That's another story for another time, and I've mentioned it in other videos. But she's just the last person in the world an intelligent, book-smart, business-savvy man would choose to be the executor on his estate. And leading up to my dad's death, I never questioned his choices or decisions I very much supported my dad making his own decisions. But if you remember the situation with his cabin that happened a few years ago where he had all but accepted the check payment from my husband and I because we had expressed that we were interested in buying my dad's family cabin that he had bought from his parents. And my dad had promised it to us. We had offered him a check. He said, no, he'll see his attorney on Monday and take care of it. And next thing I know, uh, that Monday came and he said that my sister might be interested in it. And I was like, wait, but you already told us that we could have it. And this had been going on for years where my dad had been ding dingling the family cabin like a carrot in front of all of my siblings and myself in front of our faces. And no one could afford it. No one could financially work out a situation where they were able to purchase it and take it off my dad's hands for payment of the property taxes and things like that. But my dad turned around and said that my sister might be interested and he said the bleep is going to hit the fan if he sells the cabin to me. And I was kind of taken back by that comment and I was like, what? What are you talking about? And he said, oh, your siblings are going to be really PO'd if I sell the cabin to you. And I'm like, but you have offered the cabin for sale for years and no one's been able to do it. And now I'm stepping up to the plate. My husband and I have talked about it for years and we finally decided that this is the direction we want to go. So what's the problem? And my dad would never stand up and stand up to the siblings and say, hey, this is what needs to happen. And your opinions are moot or it, nothing. Like that protection thing that my counselor first mentioned in our very first conversation to me was absolute absent. My dad would not stand up for his kids with other kids. We were just pawns in his game of survival of the fittest while he sat back and watched us all compete. So sad. Anyway, this whole situation with my sister, I, I told my dad at the time with the cabin that I didn't want to be the cause of any more heartache or conflict in our family. So I was bowing out and he applauded me. He said, thanks so much for um, forfeiting and uh, I will sell it to your sister now. And I went for 20 years He's been asking for someone to buy the cabin. He's been talking to all of us. And now there's an earnest interest in it, a commitment, and he's reneging on it. And he's actually congratulating me on being such a good person that I don't want to cause any more conflict in the family. Conflict that he, by the way, and my mom together independently created in our home. <sighs> Sorry. Um, so then it come, came time for my sister to handle the estate. And I could only imagine the manipulation that was going on behind the scenes, which is why I called the attorney friend of mine. I still to this day, as well as one or two other siblings of mine, do not feel that she handled the entirety of the estate dealing 100% on the up and up and truthfully. There is a certain scheming, manipulative older brother of mine, the golden child older brother, who uh, a couple of us do not trust. And I know for sure that he's dishonest because he's proved to me in multiple ways throughout my life how much of a manipulator and liar that he is. Uh, I digress. I was shocked when my dad chose my sister, but then what, I respected his decision. And I wasn't going to fight my sister on anything. To me, the money and material stuff just didn't matter. What mattered to me is the peace 
amongst the family members and it certainly wasn't peaceful. So long story short, um, my sister handled the estate, but my whole point being is how I fell into this thought process this morning after talking about estate planning with my coworkers, where I was really getting depressed, recollecting first the cabin situation and secondly, my dad picking my sister to handle his estate and the why did he pick my sister? Because she's not the brightest book smart and she's not the brightest street smart. So that begs the question, why? And it all boils down to, in my mind, who could be easiest manipulated by him? And it was my sister. There really is no integrity in it. There really is no character and truth. What do I talk about on this channel all the time? Being a person of integrity and honesty. And I had no clue that estates were supposed to go through the court. I absolutely understand my dad's reasoning for wanting to avoid that. But the fact of the matter is my dad did not trust any of the rest of us to carry out his wishes. He gave the responsibility to someone who is so emotionally detached like him and shut down, which is how he raised her, but also gave the job to someone who would be very easily manipulated by him because of her steadfast devotion to him as dad and blind devotion, regardless of what's right, wrong, morally correct. It's, it's emotionally draining to think back to some of these issues with my family, in particular dealing with my dad's death and the handling of his estate. Things are said and done now, so I don't harbor any bitterness or ill will towards anybody about it, but it's hurtful to recollect that my dad chose my sister, which meant he didn't trust or have faith in anyone else in the family to handle things the way they needed to be handled. And he never even had a conversation, at least not to my knowledge, not with me. I would have presumed that my dad would have chosen the golden child older brother to handle the estate. But I think that the reason my dad chose my sister is because he knew his golden child son was a manipulator and a mastermind and would not treat the siblings fairly with regards to the estate, which tells me a lot about my dad. I already knew these things, but it was a recollection that was hurtful and heartbreaking. So yeah, I snapped out of my critical funk this morning and had some good chuckles at work and also fell into a little bit of sadness recollecting the past and my dad and the kind of person he was, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I hope you guys are having an awesome day.